My name is Daniel Freeman. I'm a professor of clinical psychology and uh, MRC senior clinical fellow at the University of Oxford. Paranoia is excessive mistrust. It's when you think people are trying to harm you when they aren't. Uh, it's an important clinical problem. Uh, it's very common, so many people have a few paranoid thoughts and a few people have many paranoid thoughts. And it's very corrosive. What we really wanted to test in this study is the idea that paranoia builds upon our own negative thoughts about ourselves, that when we feel worthless or incompetent, that actually that makes us feel different and apart from other people and therefore vulnerable. That paranoia basically builds upon our thoughts of low self-esteem. The people have severe paranoia, uh, they're often prescribed medication, but increasingly there's also uh, cognitive behaviour therapy, CBT. So my fellowship with the Medical Research Council is all about developing a much better uh, treatment for clinical paranoia. Well, there's a number of uses, uh, clinical implications from this study. First of all, there's a very simple uh, implication, which is that if we can help people feel less negative about themselves and indeed more confident in themselves, then that should lower paranoia. So we recruited 60 women from the general population who were more prone to having uh, mistrustful thoughts and that they had some in the past month. So the key thing for this study was, well, to show that low self-esteem uh, is a contributing cause of paranoia, we need to alter levels of self-esteem in people. So what we did is we altered their height. Now, height is actually very important as a marker of social status because it's associated with uh, academic and career and relationship success. Um, when we feel powerful, we also feel taller. And so our idea really was to put people in a social situation, but at a lower height. Now the trick here is, well, how can we pe get people to be lower in height? And um, we use virtual reality. Well, virtual reality is perfect for this, uh, for a number of reasons. Firstly, in virtual reality, we can give people exactly the same controlled environment, the same experience, and also we can give them a neutral experience. We can put them in an environment where the computer characters, the virtual characters, all behave neutrally, which is being surrounded by other people and in an environment where you're enclosed and you can't really leave the train. So these sorts of conditions uh, can make people a bit more anxious and we think anxiety can be a trigger of paranoid thoughts. So it's a sort of very public, uh, everyday situation that certainly patients will say are the sorts of situations that can trigger paranoid thoughts. Well, there's a number of uses, uh, clinical implications from this study. First of all, there's a very simple uh, implication, which is that if we can help people feel less negative about themselves and indeed more confident in themselves, then that should lower paranoia. But the other thing we can do is also, that we're planning to do through uh, the MRC funding, is to begin to use virtual reality as a treatment for severe paranoia. So for people to learn in computer simulations that they're safer than they feared and gain confidence and take that new knowledge into the everyday life, the real world. Virtual reality is already used to treat phobias and there's good evidence that it's good for treating, for example, height phobias or spider phobias. So virtual reality has great potential and particularly as the cost of the equipment come down and down. 